I bought the cheapest DSi I could find on eBay for $30. Let's hack it. We're going to use the style hacks method, which you can find on DSICFW.guide. You're going to need a DSi with the DSi browser, an SD card, a way to read the SD card, and an active internet connection. And before I start this mod, I'm going to update this DSi to the latest firmware version. First, we're going to go to Rufus.ie, and we're going to download the tool, and we'll put the SD card in the computer. If this is a brand new SD card, we're going to go ahead and set it up as non-bootable, MBR, FAT32, and with the cluster size of 32 kilobytes. If this is the SD card you had with your DSi already though, go ahead and skip this step. And because this is a new card, I'm going to start the tool. Next, on DSICFW.guide, we're going to see the download link for Twilight Menu, as well as the dump tool. Using a tool like 7-Zip, we're going to open up the Twilight Menu archive, and we're going to copy over the underscore NDS folder, as well as the boot.nds onto the root of the SD card. And we're also going to copy over the dump tool NDS to the root of the SD card. Now we're going to eject the SD card and put it in the DSi. With the SD card in the DSi, and with it connected to the internet, we're going to open up the Nintendo Nintendo DSi browser. We'll press go to page. We're going to type in opera colon about and we're going to press go. And after the page loads, we're going to press the home button and we're going to press go to page. And we'll type in stylehacks.net and we'll go to the page. If you get this warning here, go ahead and press OK. So it's going to take about 30 seconds to uh, launch the exploit. If for whatever reason it doesn't, we're going to go ahead and try the process again. And check it out, it booted into the exploit. It's going to ask us to select our language. I'm going to go ahead and press A. It's going to ask us to select the region. I'm going to select the system region. And then it's going to boot into Twilight Menu Plus Plus. From here, we'll open the dump tool, and we'll press A to start the NAND dump. And once the process is complete, we're going to press start to exit. Then we're going to power off the system, and we'll put the SD card in the computer. Then we're going to find a folder that looks like this in the SD card. We're going to go ahead and look inside, and we'll find our NAND backup. We're going to go ahead and back this up somewhere safe on the computer, and then we'll delete it from the SD card. Then on DSICFW guide, we're going to see this download link for unlaunch. Inside the unlaunch zip we just downloaded, we're going to find this unlaunch DSI file. We're going to go ahead and drag and drop it inside of the SD card. Then we'll eject the SD card and put it back in the DSi. So we need to get back into the Twilight menu, so we're going to follow the same steps we did earlier, which again starts with Opera About, and then StyleHacks.net. Once we're back into Twilight menu, we're going to see the Unlaunched DSi installer. We're going to go ahead and open it, and then in the Unlaunched installer, we're going to scroll down to Install Now, and press A. And when the installation completes, we're going to go ahead and power down the system, and it's going to boot into Unlaunch. So now we're going to shut down the system by holding the power button, and while holding A and B, we're going to turn on the system again to launch into file browser mode. From here, we're going to go down to Options, and press A, and this is going to be our boot configuration for the DSi. Uh, right now it's set up with no button press, it'll take you to this uh, file menu. I'm going to go ahead and press A on that. And because at the moment I wanted to go to the uh, DSi launcher, I'm going to set it to launcher. You can also configure some of these other ones, like if you wanted to select a uh, twilight menu. And I'm going to go ahead and switch out my button A to twilight menu, just to make my life a little bit easier. And then I'm going to select save and exit. And then I'll power down the system, and I'm going to power it on without pushing any buttons, which is going to boot me into the DSi menu. And again, you could just set this up to boot directly into Twilight Menu, but I'm actually going to add one more thing to this DSi. For this next optional step, I'm going to set up Hiya CFW to be my auto boot. We're going to go to the Hiya CFW Helper GitHub in the video description, and we're going to grab the Hiya CFW Helper for our particular operating system. And inside of the Hiya CFW zip file we downloaded, we're going to go ahead and extract the files to a new folder. Then I'll put the SD card back in the computer, and we'll go ahead and open the tool. If you get a warning, it's safe. Just press more info and run anyway. And when the tool opens up, we're going to press the three dots here, and we're going to go to where we saved the NAND backup earlier, and we're going to select the NAND.bin. Then we're going to press Install Latest Twilight Menu++, plus plus, and we're going to press Start. When you see this pop-up, press OK, and then we're going to select the SD card. Then it's going to build the highest CFW using our NAND, and when the tool completes, we're going to press Close, and we're going to eject the SD card. With the SD back in the 3DS, we're going to hold A and B and turn on the system to launch on launch. We're going to go down to Options and select it. We're going to press A on No button, and we're going to scroll down until we see highest CFW, and we're going to press A to select it, and then we're going to go down to Save and exit and power down the system. And when we power on the system, we're going to come to this option selection. From here, you can select your region. You can decide if you want to have a splash screen, you know, the, the DSi splash screen as well. And if you just want to auto boot into a title, I like the default setting. So I'm going to press start. And then when we power on the system, it's going to look pretty indistinguishable until we see this present and we open it, which will show us we're running custom firmware because we have homebrew on the menu now in the form of Twilight menu. And now we're modded. Don't forget to like, follow, share, and check out some of the previous videos if you want to see some of the other cool stuff that we can do with this system.